Welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. This is your co host, Lori Watson, with Dr. Adam Matthews. We are so glad to have you today. You can find us on foreplayrst.com and we answer questions, and we'd love to have your feedback about what you want us to talk about. And we are really here to help couples keep it hot. So, Adam, today yeah. we're going to talk about Beyonce's lemonade. And there is probably nothing hotter right now that <laughs> people Beyonce. are talking about than Beyonce. <laughs> That's right. Keeping it hot with Beyonce. Yeah, yeah exactly. This, she just continues to give us albums unexpectedly. And this, is, this one seems to have caught a lot of people off guard. And I don't know that I'm an expert on Beyonce, but reading through some of this stuff, like... I think it's pretty relevant what to our topic, what we talk day. about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and I know. And it couldn't have come from somebody who, you know, had more delivery, both in mm. terms of her anguish that she expresses and then her hope that she offers, I think. I mean, it was it's an amazing self-revelation, yeah. I think, from a pop star. Well, and I think I've heard many young women relating to it. I think that's like she represents or is at least becoming to represent femininity, womanhood, um, a powerful example Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. And I think the yeah. question that a lot of people are asking is, if Beyonce and Jay-Z are having having problems, what does that mean for my relationship? <laughs> too? That's true. That's true. And I think that that's one of the main questions I hear from women is, you know, this sense of maybe it happened to me because I'm inadequate. But mm. now people are saying, you know, look, at if it can happen to Beyonce. That's right. You know, yeah. maybe it's not just me. Yeah. You know, maybe it's something else. Um, maybe it's him. Maybe it's stuff he's struggling with. And maybe it's us. Yeah. You know, it's not just my inadequacy. And I think that's right. I think that's because that's one of the things that she expresses so much in the album. And one of the things that I hear from women in affairs a lot is that comparison is that even she's wrestling with it. And I think comes to a place where she's saying, no, it's not about me. I think at least I think that's mm-hmm. what she's coming mm-hmm. to. But just that comparison that I hear a lot, you know, she references, she references Becky with the good hair and yeah. or she references like has several references to the other woman in comparison that are as good I, I mean, I like the one where she says, you know, I'm not too perfect to even feel this worthless. Yeah. I mean, even oh, Beyonce, I think goes through this total self doubt crises mm-hmm. of, what the heck, you know, mm. is it the girl with the good hair that is somehow or another better than me? And I, I like that she says, you know, know that I keep it sexy, know that I kept it, you know, fun or kept it hot. Yeah. That, that was my yeah. <laughs> adaptation. I, I do not <laughs> want to take on Beyonce. <laughs> She's right. so great. But all this self-doubt about was the woman more attractive than I was? Was she better in bed? Was she? Mm. I think that's so typical and You know, it's been expressed so well here, the intensity Mm -hmm. and the pain of what she's feeling. And is that something that you find, uh, you know, trying to understand a woman's point of view here, because I'm Mm -hmm. not a woman, and trying to understand the idea, it seems to me, and you tell me if this is accurate, that an idea that she's portraying is if I was able to do X, Y, and Z, if I was able to do this or that, if I was able to keep it sexy, for instance, if I was able to keep it fun, that he wouldn't, this would lead to him not cheating on me. Yeah. Is that, is that fair? I do think that that is one of the first feelings that comes up, you know, in a woman is, Oh, this somehow or another, I was deficient. And I, I think certainly in men as well. I mean, because obviously Uh, Women cheat too, Hmm. and women have affairs. And so I don't know that that's the first thought that men have is, was I deficient? Uh, Was I not good in bed? I think it it is part of it that they go through, but not necessarily. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's the first one. That probably is someone that gets there is Mm -hmm. that comparison. Mm -hmm. But it seems like that that's what I hear a lot. One of the first ones I hear a lot um, from women. And and you said, you know, the intensity Mm -hmm. of this reaction do you yeah, feel like your male patients are more practical when they hear about this, or how do, how does it differ? Yeah, when they hear about them, their partner cheating, their, their partner, partner having had an affair. I mean, everybody's different, of course, but I think mm-hmm. the the one that I hear a lot is it's more it's more of a practical. Let's fix it. How do we fix mm-hmm. it and move? Mm-hmm. And and that's what I hear from the men that cheat too when they're trying mm-hmm. to fix it. They go into problem solving. They go into problem sure. solving mode before there's this. This dealing with the Mm -hmm. betrayal, with the feelings that have happened, with her feelings of him having stepped out of the relationship, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there's always a speeding up process. I think that the person who had the affair wants it to be done. Mm-hmm. And let's fix the reason that I had the affair, which yep. was the marital problems or yep. whatever. One of the things Beyonce references is this sense that there's all this attention that Jay-Z gets, right? Mm. You know, people are telling him this and that. Mm-hmm. And and I think that it's hard to overestimate the power of attention and sexual excitement that is born in an affair. Mm. You know, that kind of, it's so exciting. Obviously, in their industry, there's even more attention and fawning and mm. stuff that is not based on the real person, but based on their... An image of the real the person. The image yeah. of who they are. So, I mean, it's a, certainly a difficult industry to yeah. stay faithful as we see, but... Yeah, well, that, that seems to me to, to even happen in non-famous relationships, mm-hmm. you know, that there's a sense of that, that there's a ego stroke or there's a attention that's paid that they're not getting in their committed relationship and that that's, like you said, the excitement, the amount of energy that's being put into that relationship, all of those things seems to give that famous sense to build up that ego and say, you're worth it. You're worth having, you're putting these things at risk, right. whatever they're putting at risk. Right. And I, I, I see so much of this ego stroking that is so seductive, you know, mm-hmm. and people, I, I don't know that our ordinary relationship can have that quality of stroking somebody's ego because we know who they are right we Mm. know their flaws and and when we stand in front of our spouse they know our flaws Mm. so even if they say lovely compliments and you know we have hot sex that night there's still this sense of yeah but the idealization Mm. which is what an affair is all about is an idealization of the person seeing them as so great seeing them yeah. through rose-colored glasses and being it. seen that way is so exciting. That rose-colored glasses effect, the thing that occurred to me was that you see each other at the most vulnerable mm-hmm. and when you are most mm-hmm. raw and it's hard to escape that. You can't forget the knowledge of all the ways that your spouse is imperfect. Right. Because it's well, uh, right. And, and it, you can hardly forgive the ways that they see you as imperfect. Yes, right? that's right. You know, they, right. See, they see us in, you know, all our terrible moments. Yeah. Uh, and that's hard to, to realize this person holds, you know, the whole picture of who I am. Oh, and yeah. that, I think, translates into our sex life in a way that maybe sometimes it isn't as hot. You yeah. know, we hold back out of our own shame, yeah. you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm a totally flawed human being here. And so we hold back and... I love that Beyonce, I think as she processes some of this kind of her bitterness and Mm. her rage really comes through. And I I know we've talked about, Adam, that sometimes that rage is so hard for the partner who stepped out to feel Mm. and hear. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly when it's so raw and honest. I seem to hear a lot of the injured party in the affair wanting to do what Beyonce is doing here. Like they yeah. almost all want a platform where oh they can, gosh, they yes. can like, they can be on HBO, yeah. millions of people hearing them kind of just vent their raw emotion. Right. I'm a rain on this bitter love. That's you know? right. I mean, <laughs> that is so cool because she does have her platform. And yeah. I mean, I think that this is both personal and public when she yeah. says this, right. You know, it's, it's the, what she feels about the, the new relationship, mm-hmm. her bitterness. She loves him. Yeah. You know, and she's purposing here throughout the album. We see to stay with him and make it make a well, difference, make and, it better. Yeah, well, even the even the visuals though of like her with a baseball bat, like mm-hmm. her assembling her her squad, you yeah. know, so to speak, to like her rage, her just uh, the embodiment of it. Yeah. I think the, in the intensity of it, I think would you know, if I'm Jay Z, it's hard for me to to fully grasp it unless it's been done to me, like putting myself in the the shoes of the amount and the intensity of it and when we come back from the break that's something that i'd like to discuss too is how to help the injured parties understand that intensity and and the duration of it as it goes on because i think like even like her album sitting through the whole thing of it it's long it's the the rage goes on for a while it It doesn't subside and i think easily right i think that rage for the person who's feeling it can make you feel absolutely crazy and foreign to yourself. If that betrayal has never happened before, what you feel is so powerful. Yeah. And I think a lot of women, and I think actually men too, sure. who have been through it, will relate to her rage, her imagery. I, I think it's fantastic. 
yep. uh, to express it. But let's come back and talk yeah, about absolutely. it some more. You're listening to Foreplay, Radio Sex Therapy with Lori Watson, sex therapist and author of Wanting Sex Again, and Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist. Thanks for listening. Wanting Sex Again, How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com and sign up for their next couples retreat weekend hosted by Lori watson awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible Welcome back to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy with Lori Watson, sex therapist and author of Wanting Sex Again. And I'm here with my co-host, Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist. And we are talking about Beyonce and affairs and how her album, Lemonade, just has hit our culture, slammed it open with talk about affairs. And my patients are coming in talking about it and resonating with it. And it's really opened up, I think, a big conversation, which is good uh, for our culture. It's probably needed. Yeah, I think so too. And we're kind of coming back to the point of this rage that she feels and how it's so ubiquitous with the experience of betrayal and how the person who is injured expresses kind of what they're going through, the trauma of how their world is upside down. Just for the record, on my website, I advertise for people who have had affairs or who have just discovered an affair to come and get help. And, you know, one of the things I say is I know that people feel and experience that their world is absolutely turned upside Mm -hmm. down. And sometimes they're getting lost on the way to the grocery store. Their psyche is so confused by the sense that, you know, I knew who I was because my partner loved me. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, I don't even know if I exist in the same world anymore. The the world feels that different when you have thought that your partner was faithful and everything was great. And then suddenly it's not. I hear a lot from the injured partner in, in the affair about how the almost the obsessive nature of their thoughts about Mm -hmm. the affair, Mm -hmm. like how it just continues. They can't stop thinking about the other person in the affair. They can't stop thinking about how mad they are. They can't stop. Like it just, it goes on and and on. You know, one of the things that I think it's hard for the involved partner to understand that, but just also to persist in the continued expression of, of those right. feelings, right? Right. Not everybody has that outlet like Beyonce does, and not everybody like that huge platform. Yeah, or to do, really get it out, or to like just channel it in some ways. Uh-huh. Like they don't know what to do with it, so it just comes out all over um, their partner in a okay. lot of different in a lot of different ways. And I think that's just the not just the initial onslaught. I think everybody expects the initial blow up mm-hmm. or the the initial emotional expression, but just as it continues, like just mm-hmm. and it persists. Like, yeah. you know, if trying to understand that, I think is difficult. I, I think it's a clinical problem for us as therapists, mm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes we know that in, you know, stage one, kind of the trauma mm. of the revelation of the affair that we know and expect the injured party to be very, very emotional. But mm. sometimes it's prolonged. And the question becomes, how long is long enough to keep expressing this rage and obsession? Mm. And when will they start to get over it yeah. so that they really can move through? And I would say there's two parts to that second stage, that there does need to be a full expression of rage, that mm. somehow or another, if the therapist can validate their rage and can help them feel heard and mm-hmm. model for their partner that this doesn't blow us over, right? Yeah. You know, or their friends who are listening, that we say, yeah, no kidding, you you feel horrible and terrible, yep. and 
so hurt and so angry that that strength of being able to take it, to mm. take the rage kind of models that, yeah, this is legitimate. And I think yeah. that that helps the person feel understood. And what I would you know, counsel the partner is they really need to be empathic. There is, for some period of time, a way to express that they're sorry over and over and over again and be reassuring. You know, I, I want to work on us. Yeah. I'm really sorry I hurt you. I'm really sorry that, you know, I stepped out of this thing. And to analyze, of course, why they stepped out inside their own pressures. I mean, Jay-Z, why did Jay-Z step out? I mean, we, we probably look at him and say, you know, he had everything. He had money yep. and fame and attention galore, and then he still needed more. Yeah. That seems problematic and obviously problematic for Beyonce as well. Like you had the, you know, you had me, right? Yep. She's creme de la creme. And, but there are problems and, yeah. and we don't exactly know why or what happened with them. But we know the pressures in ordinary couples that yeah. mount. Well, and I would think that, and you tell me if you agree with this, but that they involved partner is not going to fully understand the emotion and does not have to fully understand or fix the emotion of the the injured partner. That's right. They maybe don't because they haven't been betrayed. Mm. You know, I mean, I think that the partner wants them to get it, but um, they're not standing in their shoes. They, they need to somehow or another be empathic mm. about, look at, I, I do know, and I think this is the bridge. I do know what it's like to be betrayed. To be betrayed is human. Right? Yeah, We've that's all right. had... Some at some point in experience. And so maybe, yeah, I don't know what it was like to be betrayed by a partner, but I remember these experiences in business, in mm. friendship. I know what it feels like, how painful it is to have somebody that you counted on to be in your corner to do something else. And so yeah. that's that's what I try to get them to think about the, the party who stepped out is think about what it used to feel like and use those emotions to identify mm-hmm. with your partner. Yeah. And I think if there's a match between rage and empathy, that actually shortens that stage. Mm-hmm. I think that the stage is prolonged when the person who was involved outside of the relationship can't be empathic. It, yeah. It's like if they try to speed it up, if there's no match yep. for the person's, their party's, yeah. uh, their their spouse's rage, yeah. um, then then it goes on forever. Yeah, and they do that a lot by, like we've talked about before, problem solving or trying to fix it, or like you said, trying to speed it up, One questioning why why are you still expressing this? This is right. the same thing I've heard over and over again. Or like, getting all, frustrated. Yeah, like, hey, I wasn't the only one who was hurting in the marriage, yeah, which is right. so true. It is true. I mean, oftentimes the injured party isn't the only one who has suffered pain in the marriage. Mm. The person no. you know, who was involved with somebody else often has also suffered injuries in the marriage. But I think it's good what you said about the match because you cannot begin to to work on those issues right. until the rage has been expressed, until that, until that traumatic stage has, yeah. has gone. You've got at least, not you may not get over it, but you've at least gotten to a point where you can begin to think about the other things, right? Exactly. Like I don't, I don't think Beyonce is going to be able to think about the ways that she was not, you know, a great wife to Jay Z, or mm-hmm. not, you know, the issues that they the needed to work wife. on. The perfect wife until she gets this expression out, until she um, has this kind of cathartic um, expression, and feels like she begin can begin to think about that again. Exactly, and and I think that you know later, mm-hmm. hopefully, you know, within six months. We want the couple to be working on the relationship, yep. you know, to be working on the, the flaws, the vulnerabilities, the things that were between them that mm-hmm. might have caused the opening and the vulnerability for yeah. an affair in the first place, which, of course, you know, you can't say to them in the beginning because it just sounds like you're blaming yeah, the, that's right. the party who has been so injured. Oh, yeah. you know, if you had worked on this sooner or something, this wouldn't have happened. And that's that's not true because the person who steps out, they need to have full responsibility in my mind that's right. for the choice that they make that's to right. do that. That was yeah, the way they agree. decided to handle it. And I think that for many of us, you know, we, we can be judgmental or think that, oh, you know, I would never do that. That's right. what people say to me, and particularly the injured party says all the time, uh, but I, I would, would never, never have made that I would that never choice. do that. Yeah. Well, I don't understand that choice <laughs> right. either. I can't just, there should have been another way and yeah. there might've been, but it is sometimes the choice that the person makes because yeah. it's the only way they see. Yeah. And as the person that stepped out, you have to begin to accept that choice and own it. And I think one of the things is like, you cannot say you're sorry enough. Like you yeah. can't 
saying you're sorry and then reaffirming your commitment to the relationship. I hear a lot of people who said, well, I've already apologized. Well, that should be enough. Well, like you said, the match has to be there. And so when that expression is there, the only response for Jay-Z in this moment when Lemonade comes out is, I'm sorry, I'm right. sorry, I'm sorry. Right. Like, I mean, there's the, that's the response that has to be there for to give her an opportunity or to give, in cases of couples that we see, to give the injured party the best opportunity to be able to stay in the relationship. She, yeah. You can't stay in the relationship without apology. without that ownership, without that saying, I made this choice and I, I'm sorry that I did it and I want to go forward and be committed to the relationship. Right, right. I, I think one of the things she says that um, resonated with me from what I've heard with my patients is, you know, she says, I needed freedom too. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that's another part of the injury. It's like, wait, you know, marriage is difficult. There's, there are confinements for all of us. You know, what about mm. me? The person who says you were off having this glorious affair. Now you want to come back and work on the marriage, but it's like, you know, you went to the circus and mm. went to Europe and had this fabulous mm. experience. And now you want to work with me on the drudgery at home, but I, you know, what about me? I didn't get to go to the circus or go to Europe. And there's, there's all kinds of ways that I think people are injured Mm -hmm. by affairs. It's not just the sexual betrayal um, or the competitive kind of comparison. um, But some of these other things as well. I had one client who it was the gift giving, there was gift giving in the affair, Uh you know, and that was like, well, what about the ones that you should have been giving to me? And I think that that like there's things like that that happen like you're you're exactly right over and over again of s- these small ways that don't end up even being about the sex. It means it being about time or gifts or energy or, or specialness. Yeah, specialness. Yeah. Like and that one I think is one of the biggest injuries I hear is you know women who say you know my partner never has time for me. They're working all the time, and then you find out oh you had an affair. And it's like, okay, there were trips, there were weekends, yeah. there were late nights. You know, while I was were, while I was home with kids or while I was home doing other stuff. Or, or I was or, working somewhere else. I was else. working a job, yeah. Yeah, and suddenly all this deprivation of time that I wanted with him, somehow or another, it was all part of the lie. Mm. And I think that's, it's really hard. It's really hard. I mean, mm. I think the other thing that I try to do is to get the couple to when we're finally working on the relationship for both of them to articulate what their needs were. Mm -hmm. And then of course, it's not only between each other, but how this is from their families of origin. And in my way of thinking, not necessarily passed down directly. Oh, my father had an affair. So I had an affair and I saw that as a coping mechanism, which Mm -hmm. does sometimes impact our choices. But I think that, the deprivations in our childhood, what we learned about intimacy, maybe how we didn't learn to communicate, all what are, of that what plays expect, a role. And what right? our expectations are in relationship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, the healing is kind of parallel on a horizontal level, and then it is also vertical to me, healing all the way back generational pain so that the couple becomes so much more mm. solid and stable. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th- I think the expression there that we've been talking about is a first step toward all of those things that mm-hmm. you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's a necessary first step. And I think if we see something like Beyonce's expression here as abnormal or as over the top or anything like that, we're missing a crucial step to be able to begin to repair relationships. Right. Right? Right. It's, so it's, not, it's, it's not small. The injury is not small. And so the expression of the hurt has to match that. It's not a small thing. And to begin to examine those things, to begin even to be willing to examine family of origin issues, for instance, or begin to examine like that, those repairs, I think that we have to find a way for um, the injured partner to give voice to these these issues. Like to, yes, to give, I, I to think give you're a, right. And we're really talking about a particular stage in a fair hmm. recovery, I think, as we focus on Beyonce's album. I mean, even though she too goes through, you know, maybe to full recovery. I mean, I think her angst and anger and voice Mm -hmm. are so powerful because that is where people get stuck. And, you know, she's just done a fabulous job. She is Beyonce. (laughs) So grateful for that. She's the queen, right? Yeah, she's it. (laughs) As they say. So you are listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy with Lori Watson, sex therapist and author, and Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist. 
And we're glad you joined us to listen today about Beyonce's Lemonade and the power that she brings to an expression of rage and the whole process of an affair being worked out so publicly. And I think we have a great deal of hope for affairs working out and people being stronger. And I think that she's staying in the relationship. The last thing I'd like to say is so powerful because so many women particularly and men as well feel ashamed of making the decision to stay as if that is the wrong thing versus using this as a way to really get to the bottom of stuff in their relationship and work it out. So thank you for play radio sex therapy. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. 